Well, hello there. Happy, happy, happy 2020 to you. Many thanks for tuning to NTV Uganda. My name is Malaki Vilodera. Well, being 2020, this will be our first episode of NTV Talk Show. And we're talking matters, education and research. Well, let's get the ball rolling with introducing to you the panel this afternoon or be it morning, depending on when you're watching this particular show. Well, let's start off with uh, Professor Michael Lejeune. He is uh, the chairperson of Renu Board of Directors. He's also the former vice chancellor of the Virtual University of Uganda. He's also the founder, vice chancellor of Uganda Matters University in Kozi. Last title, <laughs> but not least, a man of many titles, the Deputy Executive Director, National Council for Higher Education. Many thanks for joining us. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. All right. Next to him, I do have Dr. Julianne Sansa Otim. She is a senior lecturer at the Department of Networks School of Computing and Information Technology College of Computing and Information Sciences at Makerere University. She is also the Vice Chairperson Board of Trustees at Ubuntu Net Alliance and also is a member of the Renu Board of Directors. Many thanks and welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Last but not least, I do have uh, Dr. Maxwell Otim Onapa. He is a director of science and uh, research and innovation, of course, coming from the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. Many thanks and welcome to NTV Talk Show, episode one of 2020. Hey, that's a big deal. All right. I think I'll start with you, Professor. Um, you know, just introducing this, I think, for the first time to the majority of Ugandans, Renu. And uh, when you talk about RENU, by the way, this means the Research and Education Network for Uganda. Just let's set the foundation first. Um, what is RENU and what does it do for starters? Well, as the name says, RENU is the Research and ne Education Network for Uganda. And it's part of a worldwide network of research educations, which they call the NRENs, National Research Education Networks. Now, RENU was started in 2006 by a group of vice chancellors, private and public universities, and some other organizations. In 2006, it grew pretty fast. In 2008, uh, they were incorporated as a not-for-profit uh, company, and the company limited by guarantee. A couple of years later, uh, once the ball was rolling, mm -hmm. In, 2006, no, in 2010, the Uganda Communication Commission granted Renu a license to establish a private network to serve connectivity amongst institutions of higher learning. And in 2012, with the advent of Africa Connect project, which is a project financed by the European Commission, Uganda suddenly found itself as a member of the international community, capable of interacting with other universities and institutions globally. Mm -hmm. And that changed the whole picture. Suddenly, RENU becomes member of the world community of researchers. It's no longer limited to a few institutions in Uganda on their own, but they're now part of a global network where cooperation, research, etc. is possible. All right. So before I go to um, uh, Dr. Julian, uh, let me ask you this other question. You know, whenever there's anything that, you know, an institution founded or any governance institution, uh, one of the critical conversations that goes, especially when this institution comes to the public domain, is matters ownership. So what's the ownership of RENU? RENU is owned by the universities, the members. It's a member-based institution, organization. So the members are the ones who will decide the direction we have to take in Renew. Mm -hmm. We have a secretariat, which is uh, hosted by Makerere University, and their job is to uh, implement the decisions of the members through their board of directors. Mm -hmm. But it's essentially member-based. So it's not for profit. No, we try to 
ensure that all the members work together. And in today's world, cooperation, partnership, is essential if you want to survive. Of course. Yeah. All right, Dr. Julian, you know, uh, you are representing Makerere University. Um, it's Adla University that Rennie sits number one, and also Makerere University has been a member since its inception in 2006. So I want you to speak heavily. He would have done it, of course, he'll do it um, later on, but I want you to speak to the significance of Renu and the role it plays in uh, research and education. Uh, yeah, so Renu, uh, like Chairman uh, Professor Ludwig said, is uh, for facilitating collaboration uh, through ICTs, collaboration among its members, both within the country but also internationally. So the role that Renu plays for the research community, I would say, I mean, at the Ugandan level, is uh, first of all connectivity, reliable and high speed connectivity. Mm -hmm. And that is also affordable. Uh, that is the basis uh, onto which all the other services are provided. So uh, that's a very, very important contribution to the member institutions, Makere being one of them. Uh, if we can go back to what the situation was before and what it is now because of the contribution of Renu, connectivity has gradually, gradually every year reduced mm -hmm. in terms of costing while increasing in terms of the speed at which we access it. And that's for yeah the universities, but also the other research institutions that are part of uh, Renu's membership. So uh, it's a very significant contribution because uh, like the chairman said, it, in today's world, you cannot do research in an isolated way. Correct. And you need connectivity in order to do meaningful research. You cannot have uh, poor internet and say you're doing research with people overseas or even elsewhere in the country. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, connectivity is one, but also like because Renu is member based and has members all over the country, if you're doing research, for example, you're based at Makere and you want to do national wide research, so that means maybe you have sites all over the country, because of uh, Renu's platform, then you're able, you don't have to physically go to those places to collect data. Right. You're able to tap into the human network uh, that is uh, uh, made possible by this kind of platform. So you're able, um, personally as a researcher, I don't have to go to Tororo if I want to do uh, data collection in Tororo. All I need to know is who, who can I tap in that is based at Busitema University. Mm -hmm. Busitema University is a member of Renu. If I want to do research in Arua, I don't have to physically travel 12 hours on the bus. Uh, I, I just have to tap into a Renu member at Muni University to help me I mean, we are in similar fields, so oh, right. there's, there's the pa pa part of the human collaboration that is made possible, of course, first and foremost, that, that is based on the connectivity, the internet connectivity that is affordable, mm -hmm. that's reliable, and that is, um, uh, that is centered around research and education, so we are not competing for other, you know, downloads that are for other purposes right. but for research and education right yeah. you know i love the collaboration bit because you know <laughs> over time like you highlighted um the cost of bandwidth has been over the roof mm -hmm. and uh, it, you know it was uh, very hard for some of the institutions that are coming into the sector to afford you mm -hmm. know research at that particular level and you know one of the most you know key fundamental um, resources to research is internet yeah access to internet. Yeah. Let me go to <coughs> Mr. Maxwell, still as we're setting the foundation for this conversation. Um, I want you to speak to the relationship between RENU, of course, uh, since its inception in 2006, and the Ministry of Science and Technology and Innovation as well. Um, how has that relationship been? He's mentioned that the growth has been exponential, so to speak, over the years. So speak to that relationship. How has it been over the years? Thank you, Nala. Um, at the outset, I think you should have also added that I also serve as a member of the Board of Directors of, of, of the Research and Education Network for Uganda. Correct. By that aside, uh, my main job, like you indicated, I serve as the Director for Science, Research and Innovation at the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. And I keep emphasizing this because this is a relatively young ministry and sometimes people confuse it with ICT. Yes. Yes, but this is... Um, a relatively young ministry but it's up and running and has hit the road. Mm -hmm. So basically um, 
One of the core functions of the ministry is really to coordinate research and innovation in the country. And in so doing, we also want to provide support for the researchers and innovators in the country so that they can do their job. And like Jolene has alluded to, um, the fact that um, internet information flow is very fundamental in research and innovation because research cannot be done in isolation. Mm -hmm. You've got to do it as a community. A community from within the country and also regionally and also internationally. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the provision of affordable and reliable internet connectivity is very, very essential. And, and this speaks very well to the aspirations of the ministry, particularly to the department, the directory that I lead, because we also strive to provide research infrastructure. And the fact that Reno has already provided part of the research infra infrastructure in terms of internet connectivity, it gives us the opportunity to focus resources on other infrastructures like laboratories and research facilities and equipment for research mm -hmm. that the researchers might need to do their trade. So in effect, Raymond is playing a very, very fundamental capacity within the country to promote research and innovation. And that's why the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation strongly identifies itself with Renu and also is available at hand to offer all the support that might come from the government that Renu might need to, to, to make sure that um, this very important institution is a going concern and continues to provide services to researchers and right. innovators within the country so that they can be able to contribute to our ecosystem where we need um, research and science to be valorized into commercializable outputs. All right, okay. Let me switch again to Professor Lejeune. You know, I was looking at the costs because for a majority of us, nothing makes sense until you break down the numbers. <laughs> Now, when I was looking at the cost of bandwidth um, in 2006 when you started, um, bandwidth was pretty much 3,300 USD per Mbps per mm -hmm. month. Yeah. And that has significantly dropped to currently 20 USD per Mbps mm -hmm. per month. That's the figure we're talking about right now. Yes. And vis-a-vis -vis that, I was also keenly looking at the beneficiaries, the member universities that are working with Renu, and they were saying that the costs have significantly dropped, which is a plus for them. But on top of that, the quality of connectivity has also significantly improved. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at the basic, you know, um, phenomena in anything, whenever the cost reduces, the quality psh, reduces as well. <laughs> so how has Renu been able to strike that balance whereby the cost is going down but the quality is actually improving? Well, I think it's not very difficult. Huh? If your target is to give a quality, uh, a quality product to your consumers, the institutions, that's your focus. Now, if you are two people using an amount of bandwidth, that costs you a lot of money. When you're 120 people, for the same amount, well, you divide it by 120. Mm -hmm. But you have to keep your quality, and that's what Renu is trying to do. Keep your quality as high as you can. And to achieve that, it's not only bandwidth, we have to go beyond the bandwidth today. And that's why Renu is now offering a whole host of services, mm -hmm. which will uh, increase the capacity of the consumers, the universities, mm -hmm. and the individual researchers. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that increase of num in numbers will also increase the capacity, the quality. Mm -hmm. You see, if you have got 50 researchers working on one project, <coughs> the chances are greater that you get better results. Mm -hmm. 50 heads are better than one head. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what we are trying to do. Bring as many people as possible onto the platform mm -hmm. And let's work together. Are we saying that you're also working with the basic service providers in Uganda? Yes, absolutely. So yeah. how are you able to coin that for them to make sense? Is it the same explanation? <laughs> because you know, um, I'm in business and I'm a business consultant. And what mm -hmm. I know is um, you always have to make the books balance. Yes, of course. So w w is it the same explanation that cut it out for them? Yes. We have no other explanation to give. Right. 
I cannot tell them I'm going to undercut you so as to make you lose money. That, that makes no sense. But I t am telling them, listen, we want to work together. You have some infrastructure which we don't have or which we cannot reach. Are you willing to partner with us? Mm -hmm. And then we negotiate the, the modalities of that partnership. All right. And uh, what I need to give credit to Renu for is, and majority of Ugandans don't know this, but it's thanks to the existence of Renu that the cost, unit cost of bandwidth is actually affordable as we speak mm -hmm. because of what Renu has done. So kudos for that. Let me go to Dr. Julien. Mm -hmm. And um, my question to you would be, you know, um, with the cost of reduction of bandwidth and all these other things, and of course we'll come back to you to just break down the services that are offered. Um, when you look at Makerere University and it being a member of Renu for all these years, since 2006, mm -hmm. what is that critical benefit that you've stood to you know, gain over the years that you look back and you're like, I just have to give it up to Renu? What is that one outstanding thing? Yes, uh, in spite of the fact that Renu offers so many services, uh, the really, really most pronounced one is connectivity still. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was a student at Makere University before I became staff, and back then, uh, I was a student of computer science, so I had access to computers and internet, but it was, you know, you could begin to download a file and go <laughs> buy a soda and come <laughs> back and then find your file. Yes. So, uh, of course, uh, internal arrangements within the university itself contributed to improving the situation, but above and beyond was the formil formation of Renu, because uh, maybe to add some uh, another picture uh, image to explain this, mm -hmm. it's like as a family, if as a family everybody eats out, one eats at KFC, another eats at Java's, another eats at Y2K restaurant. Uh, the cost of what you'll eat in a day versus what you eat if you buy the food from Nakasero Market or Nakawa Market and cook it, uh, th that is part of the explanation for Renu. Right. So the family is the research and education institution of, the uni of, of, of Uganda, saying instead of everyone eating out, let's buy the raw ingredients and cook it together. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of the explanation. So uh, Makere used to negotiate on its own with UTL and MTN and, and pay those prices, okay, and still get a very bad service. And then here comes Renu, Makere University Vice Chancellor, along with other Vice Chancellors and Head of Research Institutions say, okay, no more eating out. Mm -hmm. We are gonna buy our food and cook it in-house. Renu is the chef, okay? So the big, big plus is definitely connectivity. We can, it was unheard of in the day to say you will do a, a, a video call right. within the university. Right. It, it was just impossible. Mm -hmm. But now we do this with our research partners abroad and it's, it's just seamless, okay? So right. that is really the big benefit. I would say also, uh, for example, you know the benefit of roaming, I'm sure, when you go abroad. Mm -hmm. And these, these are some of the services that Renu is able to tap in because of the international uh, family that Renu is part of. Uh, researchers want to stay connected wherever they visit another institution. They don't want to feel like, okay, now I need credentials, what's the password, right. etc. So there is the edu room, which is possible only if you are a member of an NREN in any country. And Renu is providing that service right here. So if you're part of, of, of Renu and you go to visit, and <coughs> researchers travel all the time for conferences and everything, once you go to another institution that's part of an NREN in another country, mm -hmm. you just tap right in. Uh, along with other things, uh, research journals and other publications, all that is possible because, I mean, it was, as a researcher, I was a master's student at Makere University and you had to have a special budget for, for access to publications. Yeah. Now, that is not necessary because right. Renu is, is able to tap into the international journals uh, because of uh, having the consortium of libraries part of, 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 of members of Renu. Yeah. So there is a host of benefits and um, that, that we have been able to realize because of being a member of, of Renu. All right, good enough. Yeah. Things are easier for the students now. Yeah. Interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Mr. Maxwell. And research is. Yes. And research is yes. as well, because yeah. we know that, you know, I'm in media as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm here uh, uh, as NTV. And mm -hmm. we always study the phenomenon, different sectors and how things, not just politics, but every other sector. Mm -hmm. And what comes strongly is that if we are to get it right, if 
Africa is to move to a developed world. We've always been grappling with that. We're saying that, oh, Africa is a developing continent. Mm -hmm. But for us to get to that other level, research is critical. Yes. For us to find solutions to our problems, research is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Mr. Maxwell, let me run to you and, you know, you are a board member as well. And I want you to speak to, to just break down some of these services. And I have them a list here. And one of the critical services is um, Renu Cloud. You know, if someone jumps on to become a member, we're talking of a membership currently of 82 universities and 150 thereabout campuses, mm. Renu mm -hmm. membership. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the critical services is Renu Cloud. What exactly is it and uh, what are the benefits of getting such services? Thank you, Ma. I think um, Juliana already alluded to a number of, of services that uh, Renew offered. Mm -hmm. And um, we must emphasize that Renew does not only provide internet services, it provides a number of services. Mm -hmm. And um, it is important that members of, 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 of the Renew family take use, make use of these, these services. And one of them, like you've stated, is the cloud services, mm -hmm. which comes in very, very handy in terms of leveraging storage for your data. Mm -hmm. Because one of the fundamental challenges that research will have is capacity to store data. Correct. And also ability in case of any disaster, mm -hmm. how do you get about recovering what you've lost because this data could be lost if you sc you store it within your your, your system mm -hmm. so Ren is saying look we have this ability where you can have moreover unlimited storage of data within Renault facilities mm -hmm. you have unlimited space to store this away from your mm -hmm. uh, network all right and moreover the fact that you have unlimited storage is also coupled with the fact that the speed at which you can retrieve this data or even upload it, you're talking of milliseconds. It is instant. It is so efficient. And moreover, it is safe mm -hmm. because it is stored within Reni. You know who is storing your data. Yeah, because so safety of data is another wrong, thing. <laughs> yes. So it, this, to me, I feel this is an excellent opportunity and, 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 and capability that our researchers and our readers should leverage so All that right. We are sure that our data, the issue of data is now very, very important. Correct. It's, it's um, the one way data almost has a lot of power. Yes. Uh, and, and especially now that we are moving into the era of big data. Yes. Where you can leverage the data that you have to inform policy, to make decisions, to do market surveys, and all that, you know, so that you can be able to do innovations to tailor a certain market. Right. So this is a service that. I think it's, it's very important within for the research and innovation community. Uh, it's available and, 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 and very secure and moreover, almost unlimited quantity and speed. All right. So it's, 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 it's our disposal and I'm very happy that our research fraternity has this kind of facility rather than running around you know, um, grappling with issues of data storage. Thank you so much, Dr. Max on the team for pointing out to that. Add one little thing. Yes, Professor. Uh, because we still have a big, well, a big problem, a serious problem with academics and researchers. They think something, if I give it, put it on the cloud of Renew, they're going to steal it from me. Mm -hmm. But that's against the whole principle of university collaboration. Mm. It's not a question of stealing, it's working together and we put it in a secure place. Yep. Your data will not be stolen. On the contrary, they're there secure. Your server at the university, if you have one, can be hijacked. Mm. Yeah. And somebody can steal everything and, and it's lost. Mm -hmm. In the cloud, nobody will do that. It's not possible. All right. So a mentality is also to change with yes. our researchers and, and, and academics. Yeah. All right. To be open to new ways of doing things. Thank you so much, Professor, for that. Um, can I just say something <laughs> about my... Yes, I, I yes, Doctor. Yes, it's see, okay. Uh, within the research and innovation globally now, is what we call open data, mm -hmm. yeah. which, which is the trend now in research, that if you share data, you're better off than keeping that data within yourself. Correct. Because, yes. you know, when you share knowledge, it might price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
if I share with you my slide, possibly you're going to make a presentation. You're going to add something. Yes. You make it better. Next time you pass it to professor, mm. he will add something. And by the time it comes back to me, it will be come with new knowledge. Yes. And this is the spirit of sharing and working in a, and working in a network and collaboratively. You know, what I feel is that we need to, okay, we have to take a break. But when we come back, before we move to the other service, there are a few questions that I'm sure that I share with the viewer that we need to pretty much clear out. So allow us to take that small breather. We'll be back with the conversation. Stay with us. Welcome, welcome back. We're still talking matters, research and education in Uganda. And so before we took that short commercial break, we were talking about one of the key services that Renu offers to its members, and um, it's Renu Cloud Services. And so before we go to the other services, let me just ask this one question because I'm sure we're sharing the same question. Um, Professor, and I think this will go to you. Um, are we saying then that if I'm a member institution, for instance, a university, and I store my data uh, in the Renu cloud, do we say that that data is classified as open data such that yes. other member institutions can actually access? Yes. Yes, that's, that's what it is. Okay. So it's open data. It's open. It's indeed collaboration. It's open data for the members. All right. And it's secured by the fact, or to the fact that Renu is managing it. Uh, we ensure that nothing is going to leak or anything like that. Correct. All right. Let's move on to the other service, which is critical. Um, uh, we won't look through each and one, uh, each and every one of them because um, of <laughs> time, but be sure to uh, look out for that. But I'll just point them out. Um, we have Renu Cloud, like we pointed out too. We also have web hosting. Yeah. Now, web hosting is another key conversation. I think Dr. Giuliani can take on that too. And web hosting, um, what exactly is this service and what are the benefits of having such? Okay, so Renu uh, web hosting service is for researchers, of uh, course, research institutions and, and higher education institutions, universities, mm -hmm. as well as the researchers and students within these communities. So I I in the developed world, it's standard procedure. If you're a student or a staff in an institution, you have a web page and all the, tr the research that you're doing and all the things that you're doing are posted there. It's for purposes of sharing and for people who are doing similar things to be able to find you and, mm -hmm. and, and, and you sh continue the conversations with everybody. Mm -hmm. So because of uh, the challenges of connectivity and storage, that hasn't been much of a tradition here. And, and, and Renu now offers this service for the same purposes, mm -hmm. such that, I mean, uh, I I in the developed world, because of this, someone can scout out a student before they finish and, and, and give them a job because, right. they, I mean, they're, they're saying, this is what I do, these are the skills I have, these are my publications, it's out there. So it's like your space, your advertising space, okay. your billboard. So now Renu offer, offers this service at a very, very affordable, um, much cheaper than the commercial rates yes. of hosting per year. Okay. I have a website on the Renu web hosting uh, service uh, and uh, many other researchers How and many other students. At? Roughly, how much do you pay? Less than ten dollars a year. Oh, good enough. <laughs> so, good uh, enough. so, so this this is a service that's available for institutions, for yeah. researchers, for students. Anybody can 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 have a website out there and, and tell the world what they're doing. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Maxwell, web conferencing is another key one, especially in today's world. Describe it, and what are the benefits of having such? Well, uh, what one of the things that we also need to understand very well is that. The revenue services are for research and education institutions. Correct. So you need to qualify as an education institution or a research institution if you're to benefit mm. from the revenue services and become a member. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Web conferencing facility, just like it's, 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 it's stated, it's a conferencing facility, but you do it via video link. Mm -hmm. You know that 
that is a multimedia presentation. Because like now, we are doing pictures, there's text, there's sound, there's color. So it takes a lot of bandwidth. Mm -hmm. If you try, I'm sure you may have tried to do a bit of it using your WhatsApp or what it is, and you know what it takes. Within no time, your MBs are gone. Yes. But Ren is saying, look, in order to further facilitate collaboration and also to offer exchange ideas in real time and, 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 and probably in, in flesh and blood like we're saying now, we are providing this facility. Yes. A researcher probably based in Mbara can conference with researchers in Gulu University mm. or in Muni or in, 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 in Kampala International University mm. and also deliver lectures in real time to students or to a, a um, to a community or make a presentation, whatever it, it, it's, it's um, the case may be. Okay. So we're saying that these facilities are equally available and the members of Renew fraternity can be able to take advantage of such. All right. So that we continue with the, the exchange of ideas and also networking in real time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Professor, yeah. there's another service that I think will catch the eye of um, most of researchers because at times we find ourselves um, in a position whereby you just have to use public internet connectivity and when you talk of that and especially when you have to work on your work for example it's research data you need that assurance that I'm still secure while using in, uh, you know public data mm -hmm. or public internet connectivity so this service is EduVPN Describe it and let us in on what exactly does it do. And well, a uh, VPN that means virtual private network. Yes. In fact, I, what, uh, what I could say it's it creates a secure tunnel between your device, your computer, and the internet. So that nobody is going to to tamper with it. You can work securely, and Renew offers that service. Mm. We make it possible for individuals or for institutions mm -hmm. to work securely without any interference. Mm -hmm. Hackers and so on, mm -hmm. they, they, they're not part of the game. Right. Interesting. So you know that between your device and the internet services that you're accessing, yeah. there no one can come in between. It's like the soldiers there, <laughs> in between, kind of. literally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's go to the other service, um, um, and this is uh, just an <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, we have the Edu Rome. Julian, yes. I think you spoke to roaming. Yes. <laughs> yes. Speak to Edu Rome. What, what yes. exactly is it and um, what are the benefits? Yeah. So, I mean, just like uh, you, f you have an MTN line yeah. or whatever network you use here, Airtel, and you fly to South Africa, and uh, MTN South Africa picks you up automatically, and you can begin communicating without much uh, hitches, yeah, hitches. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a similar thing, except it's between NREN, National Research and Education Network, to another. So for example, between Uganda's RENU and Kenya's ne KENET, if, if you're part uh, of, of Uganda's RENU and you've signed up for this EduRome service, right. which is available, when you go to Kenya and you're within another KENET institution, mm -hmm. you don't have to ask for Wi-Fi password, right. or as long as there's a, w a network there, you pick up immediately and just continue. All right, so um, let's just move on swiftly to the, to the other, you know, kind of um, conversation. For you to get all the services, please be sure to log into their website. Dr. Um, Maxwell, do let us in on those details. Um, do you have a website? Where can people find you and get all this information at before we go to the next conversation? Do we say professor? Yes, I yes, I yes. Right. You want the Renew Net website? Yes, yes. but we Renew have a website, of course. All right. Renew dot ac dot ug. All yes. right. Renew dot ac dot ug. All right. Be sure to log into that for you to get all the information. There's another question coming through, but I think this one has been answered, so to speak. Um, a question coming through from our social media platforms, and they're asking, can a non-research institution become a member? I think that has been answered, Professor. Well, it depends what you mean by non-research institution. Okay. Eh? Mm -hmm. If it's a group of, uh, I don't know, uh, carers for ABCD, which has nothing to do with education or research, there's not much chance. Eh? The purpose of Renew is education and research. Mm -hmm. yes. Education and, and research. research. Oh. Yeah. And okay. we are trying now to bring it down. You're already done at s a senior school level. Mm -hmm. 
and UCC is pushing that very much, at least the institutions not too far from universities, so that they can get an easy link with the university and then get on the new network. Right. So we want to help them too. And God knows, maybe in the near future, primary schools will be part of it too. Oh, interesting. See, what we want to aim at is to give education at all levels the possibility to benefit from mm. all what is available today in technology. Mm. All right. Mm. Mr. Maxwell, and you and want and to say yes, something? Yes, and, and again, that is, this is where the Ministry Health's venue yeah. to identify concretely um, institutions that are doing research. It is important that, uh, like Professor said, that we get ins institutions that are actually involved in research, mm -hmm. because we, you see, this is a non-profit um, institution organization, mm -hmm. and, and therefore the, the 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 services that are provided are strictly restricted to research and education. All right. So the ministry helps to recommend some institutions if they are in doubt, they can consult. Okay. Um, Renew has um, received a request from such an, such an entity. Are they in the database of the National Council for Science and Technology or at the ministry as a research institution? Mm -hmm. And then we can be able to endorse and advise Renew as appropriate. So what you're saying is ideally there's a vetting process yes. before oh, yeah. someone is actually you know, yes. given a membership yes. status yes. Yes. to Renew. Otherwise, oh. everybody would lay claim mm. because um, the services that Renew provides um, affordable and also of high quality. Who doesn't like those kind of qualities? No, <laughs> no everyone would go for it. All right. Yes. And then we, of course, uh, Renew does not compete with the commercial internet service providers. Mm. So for those ones, they can access their services from the other providers. Yes. Right. As Renew concentrates to promote education and research in Uganda. All right. Um, professor, I'll go to Professor, then come to you, Dr. Julian. Um, you know, we've talked of membership and that somewhat vetting process there. Yes. In. So let's talk about the cost bit of things. For me to become a member, what is expected of me cost-wise? Do I have to pay anything for me to benefit from all these services? Yes, but you, you pay for your bandwidth. For the connectivity. Uh, there is nothing else. The moment you're accepted as a member, then you yes, pay you that subscription for the You bandwidth. pay your subscription fee. Yes. Which depends on the, the amount of bandwidth you want to Co use. Correct. 20 mm -hmm. USD per MB. 20 USD per MB. Per mm. MB. Per month. Per month. Mm. There's nothing. No membership fee? No. Great. Mm. And you see, people are saying, but you know, what do you do with all that money? Because mm -hmm. there is money. Funnish Makerere is close to 1,000 MBBS. Yes. Yeah? So uh, that's a lot of money. Now, all that money is spun back into the organization. That's how we can offer all these services. Of right. Create a new service. Mm. And at the end, maybe I'll say something about planned services we have, mm. which is important. Mm -hmm. We do not want to sit on, on, on a big bag and do nothing. We want what we have to grow mm. and grow with the institutions. All right. Mm. The growth is critical. Yes. yes. All right. Yeah. So before we wrap this up, I want us to just have some legit conversation here. And, you know, we've looked at Renu from its inception to its growth pattern. But, of course, nothing grows without challenges. Out of challenges, that's where you get your growth from, so to speak. Yes. So over the years, especially mm. Dr. Julia, now you being a member since its inception, mm. what <coughs> have been some of those challenges that um, Renu has faced? I would say one of the most critical ones is actually forging real collaborations within yeah. nationally. Um, uh, you find that institutions collaborate uh, more with international partners mm -hmm. than within each other um, for obvious reasons, one of them being funding. And that's the main one, being funding. Uh, but uh, it's Reynolds' mandate to facilitate this collaboration nationally, and mm. it's one of Renu's focus in its current uh, uh, strategic plan. Mm. So I would say that's a main, main challenge, uh, realizing actual collaboration. So, yeah. so to speak, this is a research output based on collaboration between Muni, Barara, and Islamic University in Uganda. Let's right. say things like that. Huh? Yeah. There are not very many such examples. Right. And, uh, it's, it's a key challenge that Renu is actually uh, finding ways to deal with. 
All right. Yeah. Dr. Maxwell, you being a board member, what is that other challenge that you would say you're grappling with currently as Remy? Yeah. Um, I think rising from the conversation we've had, you've seen that Renew has tremendous capacity, mm -hmm. an array of services. Our feeling is that these services are not yet being fully utilized. Mm -hmm. We talked about cloud services. Mm -hmm. It is underutilized. Mm -hmm. And we are inviting our members to make use of this opportunity. Mm -hmm. We are talking of web hosting, mm -hmm. excellent facilities and very efficient. We are inviting members to use this facility so that they can increase their visibility. They can um, improve on their network. Video conference. We want all these centers around the issue of networking. Mm -hmm. We feel that we haven't quite got there right. to really have the real network that we see mm -hmm. to make a vibrant research and education community mm -hmm. driven by the power of affordable and efficient internet. All right. We think there's still a bit of a challenge there. Okay. Mm. Um, Professor, I was looking at uh, one of the conversations that uh, Remy had with one of the member universities, and they were saying that one of the critical services, now that we're talking about leveraging um, some of the services to 100%, is they were saying that for them, one of the key benefits they gained is the connectivity to internet. Because yeah. initially, they were being connected to cables. Now it's fiber. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So are we saying that's one of the critical also services that you offer, upgrading of connectivity? Well, that's what we do, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the aim is that everybody is linked in the same, in the same way, so that okay. everybody's got the same speed. Mm. Does it come at a, at a, at a cost for Renu or the member no, university? Uh, no, there, there is, when the university wants to be linked to the Renu network, mm -hmm. we have what we call the last mile. Uh, you know that Uganda is, there's an, uh, a national network, a backbone, etc. Now it can, in Kampala, it's in town, and Google has put on their own network very fast. Right. So it's very easy to link there. But when you're a country, it can be two, three, four, five, six miles. Yeah? And that there is a cost. Mm -hmm. We cannot, uh, be, we don't put in the infrastructure, we subcontract somebody to do it. That has to be paid. That's a commercial thing. We can negotiate the prices. But what Renew wants to do is to assist institutions who cannot afford it and who we think should be members, mm -hmm. we subsidize part of it. To give you an example, it's uh, like uh, it's Bugema University. Mm -hmm. They're pretty far away from uh, the, the, main, uh, the main line, so uh, we subsidize them to a certain percentage. All right. We want to make sure that all our institutions get the same facility. That's mm. key to us. Okay. Interesting. Quality mm. is not compromised. No, 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 no. All right. It's no, all no, no, fiber. No. Mala, you've just said it. We have the fiber optic cable, which mm. is a um, very excellent um, conductor of, 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 of this internet information. Yes. And the last mile that Professor talked about is when you have the cable running along the main road, the highway, the last mile would be now to pick it and take it to the point of use be it a, a facility, like in our case, a research facility. So somebody has got to come, Indeed. dig up that ho that hole, lay the cable, and take it to this to, to the mm. to, to the place, and to I the think, facility. And I think that offers solace to especially universities or research institutions that are in the rural areas yes. mm. that have been looking at Renu and thinking that since we are far away, maybe we won't, you know, Benefit. be offered the same yeah. quality services yeah. as a yeah. university or institution that is in Kampala, so to speak. Yeah. All right, lessons learned, Dr. Julian. Um, you know, I'm still going back to you for challenges <laughs> and lessons learned because you are a member institution mm. and uh, you've been there since 26, 2006, so to speak, mm. its inception. Mm. Um, lessons learned over the journey. I would say two. One, uh, internet is an equalizer, just like education. So the, the institutions, the mem potential member institutions that are up country, uh, just a matter of time that they get connected. When they get connected, they'll just as much benefit from these international collaborations, ETC, because of the connectivity. So internet is an equalizer mm -hmm. for anybody up country or in the city. But also secondly, uh, together we are stronger. So uh, just to invite all potential member institutions to uh, critically think and consider becoming members in 2020 and right. 
and enjoy the journey like the rest. Okay, thank, thank you so much. All right, Dr. Maxwell, future plans. And then I'll also take some of the future plans from Professor on the other end. Yeah, I think from, uh, for us, um, the big picture is for the ministry to work with Reno to roll out these excellent services to those institutions that deserve them. Um, as a matter of fact, now we need to see how venue, in my opinion, can be properly anchored in the services that the ministry provides mm -hmm. in terms of uh, probably giving them um, a legal position, if, if, if that's possible, so that they can be able to to, to, to conduct business, which is which is really very critical what they're doing because they're supporting what the government actually should be doing. <laughs> so that they do that knowing that it's a going concern. Reni is here to stay and will continue to provide these services. All right. Yeah. Professor. Plans, there are plenty of plans. They're, they're buzzing in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Top three, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> but you know, there's uh, two things. Mm -hmm. One which is already in the making we want to use the resources of RENU to be part also in real research through scholarships. So that means we want to invest the money, the cash money, into institutions where the good research is done. Mm -hmm. And we have set up a scheme uh, through which they can apply for a grant. It's not much, but you know, a couple of thousand dollars can, can do a lot of things. Correct. Yeah. Secondly, and that we're going to work on it this month, we want to set up a library, a virtual library, which will be at the disposal of all institutions. Now, when I was at the virtual university, we had a library of 50 million uh, documents, all online. That's peanuts. If we can set up a library of 500 million or a billion documents and make it available just like this mm. for universities, this is going to change the face of research in our universities. Correct. All right. Many thanks for coming through and for having that conversation. It's quite an eye-opener. Um, Professor, before um, I let you go and we close this, I want you to repeat the website again where um, potential yeah. future members can actually log in and get the details. So the website of Renu is renu, R-E-N-U, dot A-C, dot U-G. And you'll be, you'll be on it and everything appears very clearly. It's a nice website. It's Thank very so well much. designed. All right. And if they want to come physically, Professor, where are you situated? Yeah. Renu is uh, currently uh, hosted at okay. Makere University, mm -hmm. uh, very close to the Vice Chancellor's residence. All right. Thank you so much. Well, we were joined for this conversation by Professor Michael Lejeune. He is the chairperson of Renu Board of Directors, also former ch vice chancellor of the Virtual University of Uganda, also the founder vice chancellor of the Uganda Matters University in Kozi, and the deputy executive director of the National Council for Higher Education. Many thanks, sir. Also, we did have Dr. Julianne Sansa or team. She is the senior lecturer at the Department of Networks, School of Computing Information and Technology, College of Computing and Information Sciences at Makere University. She also has another role as the vice chairperson, board of trustees at Ubuntu Net Alliance, and is a member of the Renu Board of Directors. We were also joined by Dr. Maxwell Otim Onapa. He is one of the board of directors at Renu and also the director of science, research, and innovation from the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation. Salute and a happy 2020. Thank you. All right, well, that's it for the first episode 2020 for NTV Talk Show with me, Mala Kivila Odera. Have a blessed evening, afternoon, or morning, depending on when you're watching this. I wish you nothing but a prosperous 2020. Let's see each other again on episode two. Stay tuned.